click this button to show you. Okay. Well, hey everybody, namaste. This is Master Lady Kira Ra here, and I'm really appreciating you joining me here tonight. And we're live streaming right here at Official Sri and Kira. And as we are here together right now, I want to invite you to bring your hands to your heart. And, and as you're bringing your hands to your heart, to just be here. We're going to take about two minutes to just be here now. And in just being here right now with our hand on our heart, I want to, I want to just open this evening as we're gathering. I'm getting hot just being with all of you right now. But as we're gathering and as we're coming together, what I really want to invite you to do is to remember maybe closing your eyes if you feel safe to do so. In this moment, I trust myself. Let's breathe that in again. In this moment, I trust myself. And I trust myself enough to take off my jacket because I am absolutely that hot. And also want to make a note that for those of you that are chomping over from another YouTube link that you had, Part of that is because of my beloved husband's recent ascended presence saying, okay, time to transcend and, and move forward. And forgive me, I'm on a, a screen that I'm not accustomed to, so it's kind of like different for me. Um, everything seems, seems a little different these days, right? So in this moment, I trust myself. And in trusting ourselves, what we do is become the one. Now, what does that really mean to become the one? And, and why are we really here this evening? You know, what's going on and, and why this urgent message for humanity? Well, a couple of reasons. Reason number one is that I believe that most of you already know my beloved husband transitioned off the planet just about uh, a week ago. It was actually exactly a week ago today. And that was an extraordinary moment for us all, was it not? To, to For those of us that have known Wisdom Teacher Sri Ram Ka his whole life or, or our whole public life together, for those of you that are just meeting him through me or through our website or through any other form, know that you are living at a moment where the ascended presence is yours to command, where you are at a level of consciousness and conscious awareness, more specifically, that you have not ever been at or attained before. And so in that experience, in that knowing, in that oneness, everything is shifting because the perfect balance, that cross of perfect balance is consciousness itself. So this evening, as, as you're all here live and whether you're here live or not, when, whenever you may see this video, may your, may your heart receive it, that, that we're going to encode in this timing right now. That whenever you are here in this moment, may your heart know that you are truly loved. May you know that through the sacred sequence of incarnation, you chose to be on this planet right now at this very specific moment. And, and I want to open up by sharing with all of you that I just adore so much that you are my family and, and I am here for you in a way that Sri and I tonight, right now, um, I've put on his wedding ring. You can see right there on my uh, right power finger. And I've put on my wedding rings on my finger. And the reason I'm sharing that with you is that it is right now today in this moment, our 22nd um, spiritual wedding anniversary. It's also the full moon. It's also alchemical transformation. There is so much that is happening right now. And in the moment of what is happening right now, Sri and I had planned on taking a, uh, a little time off and, and having celebrated this anniversary. And instead, I have the honor of celebrating it with my family. So thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes and, and for being in this moment and for honoring the extraordinary journey of the yoga of self-ascension that Sri literally dedicated his life to and has now ascended into a realm of divine mastery 
that that one could only bow before, or at least I could only bow before. I had intended on sharing quite a few slides with you this evening, and because of my inability to come in through another um, experience, which was eCam, and I had to go direct into YouTube here, I don't know how to share inside of the YouTube studio. So you're going to just get me, and I'm going to get you. So I want you to grab your tea. You know, I made mine before we got right on. I've got a lovely rose mint here tonight. And as we're coming together, and as you're getting ready, why don't we consider this to be our mystical salon? Why don't you give yourself the gift of relaxing and knowing that within this moment, within this sacred container, you, right now, you, are moving into a multidimensional field of presence that you have known was coming, that you understand, and that you, in whatever way it feels right for you, have been anticipating and anticipating and anticipating. We all, every one of us, chose to be here through the sacred sequence of incarnation, and, and forgive me if you've heard this before, but I'm going to share it again, because I think it's really important in the context of the extraordinary moments we're in, where a true ascended master has just been created in front of us, where my beloved wisdom teacher, Sri Ramka, is now ascended master wisdom teacher, Sri Ramka, where, where the world has raised its consciousness enough that you are remembering the mastery presence that you are. I want you to really breathe that in. Right. Let's let's start over with where my beloved tree would be, which is where you bring your hands to your heart and say, in this moment, I trust myself. Let's do an Abhisa breath on that. OK. In this moment, I trust myself. Because within that comes the power of being through the sacred sequence of incarnation. So scroll back. Let, let's talk about how the sacred sequence has, has last been really on this planet and why it's part of this urgent message. For you to really let go of the paradigms that are holding you, to really surrender the ego, to really say yes to the conscious awareness, to the expansion that is here now. In order to really do that, you have to break the chains. Those chains of dogma are all over everybody, right? But when we can own that I am emergence itself, to, to live not only in the now, but in the now potentiality of the knowing of what is already unfolding. And it all begins with the sacred sequence of incarnation. So the sacred sequence of incarnation, imagine you're a comet right? You're a comet and you're this beautiful, radiant, brilliant light and you are just flying through, right? You're just flying, flying, flying through with space, time, potentialities. And in this beautiful, brilliant, light-filled experience that you are, in this very specific potentiality, in a moment where the Magi walked was the last time that the sacred sequence of incarnation was here. And, and prior to that, Antis, prior to that, it was during the original seeding of this planet. Now, I want you to close your eyes for a minute because you're going to remember this. Because if you're here right now, then you already know that you were here at the seeding. And that's really powerful. That's part of this urgent message. Is that those of us that were part of the original seeding of this planet of the experience of crystalline light, this extraordinary experience of potentiality, what we call our beloved mother Gaia, Panchamama, Earth, her, her gorgeousness, right? She was the jewel of this potentiality in this universe as far as her extraordinary components, that beautiful intersection of the alchemies that, that wove together to create formed existence that was assured. So imagine, remember, relax, pretend, it doesn't matter. You were here at a moment when you took birth, when you incarnated in whatever form you may have incarnated, which may not have looked like it does right now. 
But at the moment where this extraordinary experience of formed awareness was gifted to the world, your mastery was assured. It wasn't something you had to find. It wasn't anything you had to remember. It was just assured. And the moment your incarnation happened, the minute, the second that you arrived in this true Garden of Eden, those that had the honor of shepherding you through your life were gifted with the sacred scrolls through the sacred sequence of incarnation. Tosa Blue Mountain happens to be one of those very rare, rare, rare places on the planet where we are sitting at one of the original seeding temples. And that's a gift that brought Sri and I here. Through the sacred sequence of incarnation as the comet that you are, you become through an awareness, the yearning to touch, right? I want to hold my husband more than anything in the world right now. I miss him so much. But that's why we came. We came to feel, whether it's the depth of our pain that we never thought we were competent of feeling, or whether it's the joy of meeting the love of our lives and being married exactly 22 years ago today, right now, all of that's why you're here to grow hair or not, <laughs> grow fingernails or not, whatever it is, we're here to transcend it. We're here to bring consciousness to it. And so as the sacred sequence of incarnation, as you are streaming through the universe, your heart energy ignites and pulls you into a consciousness stream of a potentiality where your luminescent presence, where your specific linear and circular heritage together, linear and circular heritage together intersect. And so here you are, this beautiful comet, and your heart is just massively moving and you're saying, yes, 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 yes. And what happens is that you arrive right here and you pick first the place of your birth. And, and forgive me, you pick first, yeah, you pick first the, the, the date of your birth, but you don't use an hour. And the reason that we don't use the hour or, the, or, or that that's never used is because first and foremost, to, to be in a calendar or a calendar sequencing that right now would say today is January 25th, 2024, demarcates this specific potentiality. Because in this specific potentiality, as across the universe, the universal communicator is what? It's the, the language of numbers. It's the language of our exponential beingness, right? So in that universal language, in that commonality, we, we glide in, picking that date, knowing that the sacred sequence has inserted us so that once again, our mastery is assured. It's always assured. It's always assured. It's just a question of how you want to move into it. So as we, as we make that journey, as we come in and we say, okay, I'm going to come in at this moment and I'm going to be there for these events. And this is why I'm coming because this clash of consciousness and I had all these great slides and I'm going to see if maybe I can figure out how to share something. I, I don't think I can. Um, oh, I do see a share screen. I'll try. And so in that clash of consciousness, you demarcate this potentiality first by using the numerical sequencing of this potentiality. And then coming in, okay, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I'm coming in on this date. Well, coming in on that date, there are 12 worlds of density in this very specific potentiality right now. Many that are coming in contact. I had extraordinary contact yesterday. I'm going to be putting up a video tomorrow at YouTube of the incredible ships that are showing up here ever since Sri ascended and things that are taking off like crazy. Those 12 worlds of potentiality have nothing to do with consciousness being vaster or more awake than you. Science fiction is just that. It's fiction. It's inserted to get your mind to wrap around a field of beliefs that take you away from the opportunity of knowing. That was why Sri and I decided to become very reclusive. 
when we started our journey, when we were called to bring our, our journey worldwide, when we knew we would be living in Spanish speaking world longer than we ever lived in the English speaking world together, what we knew in that moment was that in this very specific potentiality, in the broadness of everything that is coming forward, we knew that we were going to strike humanity's 12 hours, 12th hour together. And that's where we are right now. And that's where your country of birth steps in because every one of you here, wherever you chose to incarnate right now through that sacred sequence of incarnation, coming in through this numerical sequencing, then you move into that, that, that place of birth. That is the first moment that your eternal nature starts coming into, I'm not going to say separate, I'll say separative, a separative nature that is moving into this potentiality with concretization, right? You're starting to call forward the fact that there are borders, there is a landmass, there's all this that's happening. But what's happening more is that you're calling it on this specific one of 12 fields of density that exist right now. So you chose this one and you chose this moment. And what's so beautiful is as you are that comet coming in, and as you have entered into this extraordinary sequencing of time, and as you have said yes to how you're going to look, feel, the, the, the mores, the taboos, the beliefs, everything that's going to unify around you, then there are those that are ready to receive you. There are all those that have already prepared, all the wombs that are waiting. And it's through your name that is your first communication with those that will once again be shepherding you into form. The sacred sequence of incarnation. Each one of those three points comes together to form what's known as your master soul code. And we're at the moment where the master soul codes are waking up. It's, it's part of the entire, entire thing. So as you're relaxing into this, as you're breathing into this, as you're really just saying, okay, I get it. I, I, I see what's happening here. I want you to consider that the number 13, which let's break that down. You have the one plus the three is the four, right? So the number 13 is, is literally the cross of perfect balance, right? Right. It's that, you know, there you go. It's that cross of perfect balance. It's those four points. And the 13 is the only sequencing that calls in the perfect balance in this realm of communication that also considers your universal eternal nature. Many, many years ago, oh my goodness gracious, probably, I don't know, maybe 17 years ago, some of you in the chat might remember, <laughs> but maybe it's about 17 years ago, I was very, very blessed and honored when the Ascended Realms invited this body of form to bring back into this world the sacred sequencing of incarnation and the ascended numerology that goes with that and the master soul codes and and how to chart them and what was so revolutionary at the time i remember as this material came in over a year and then it took me another two years to consolidate and then really have extraordinary blessing of teaching so many around the world now as numerology ascended numerologists is that let us not forget you are not truncated from the numbers one to nine. You have an eternal nature, which is the zero. And you sit in the totality of the 12, the Trinity, the one plus the two. One of the unique, really unique things is that it's the remembrance that the one plus the one will always be one, not the 11. And that the 10 is the one plus the infinite. And so when this is sequenced on your person, on, on the dial, on the wheel, and then sequenced on your body, what happens is an extraordinary awareness of your eternal nature, a remembrance that you are more than that which is perceiving you to be limited, a remembrance that we are outside of all, and I mean all, all of the issues that could ever stop us, including, and, and forgive me, I've been describing it to people as 
we have been in an active battle for the dominion of your brain for a long time, meaning we, all of us in this planet, this in, in this potentiality, in this linear sequence insertion right now, through informed awareness, you have lifted your consciousness. And I invite you, if you're chatting, to listen to me rather than try to, to, to make comments about everything that maybe not might be about the material. I really encourage you to learn. I encourage you to open your mind, right? Open your mind, expand beyond the limitations. Just because everything in this world of potentiality is trying to hold you captive to that which has been, perhaps it's time to know that which is. When Sri and I got together, one of the first beautiful installments from Archangel Zodkill was, was really extraordinary talking about how the yoga of self-ascension had last been brought into this planet by Manly Hall, that during that time, the yoga of self-ascension was misunderstood, that the level of consciousness was unable to really rise to that. And then shortly thereafter, I had my visitation, my, my full-blown classroom with Helena Blavatsky inside of our hard shell yurt in New Mexico. And, and she was the one that really told me and shared with me that the energy of Ave Sa, the energy of the yoga of self-ascension, specifically the Ave Sa in the late 1800s, among many of those that were, were living in the caves that were out in Tibet, that were out in Nepal, that were all over when she went to visit and in India, when they looked ahead, when the visionaries looked ahead into the 1900 sequencing, they saw that there was an opportunity to precede, S-E-E-D, right? Precede the yoga of self-ascension into that moment so that it would be like a frequency in consciousness and that it would not be until after and if, and that was really, really important when she said that to me, that it was after and if, but of course we did, right? If humanity made it to 2000, that would only be after 2001 that the, that the consciousness would begin rapidly and exponentially up leveling and that there would be this rich opportunity to do this. And she's explaining all this to me in 2003 and early 2004. And where has that brought us? Where are we right now? What's really going on? Well, as I mentioned earlier, several years ago, we came forward with the battle for the dominion of your brain. And that's going on outside of anything that that we would want to sit here and give words to. Because by, by defining it more, you limit thyself. By freeing your mind, you, you float, you fly. You really, really fly. And, and I mean, that's, that's really the gift, isn't it? To be able to, to say, okay, I, I can do this. I, I, I can do this. And so in, in being able to come forward and do this, you, you are being invited to let go of everything that you ever were taught and to start trusting your heart, to start trusting your ascended heart. When you trust your ascended heart, and that's right here, it's that physical heart that is stabilized through the first, second, and third chakras becoming peace, love, and joy. It stabilizes in this heart right here. But then by holding the ascended heart, I mean, really holding it, and I suggest the I am here, which opens this beautiful field of energy of neutrality. By holding your ascended heart right now in this moment, and I mean right now in this moment, you are being gifted to transcend into your alchemical transformation outside of that which has the battle of your brain locked. And I want you to just breathe that in. And, and remember, I'm here to answer your questions as well. You know, one thing my beloved Sri always did, he used to giggle that he would interpret for me. And so I'm talking a little slower. I'm wearing both of our wedding rings and I'm doing my best to really have you just stay with me. But I want you to know that if you have any questions, ask them. 
please, please, please ask them. I love you so much. I want you to understand this because we are at a moment right now, and I, I, I cannot stress enough, I'm going to put out some Zoom calls to be able to really share all this material more intimately with those of you that want to know more. We are, we are at a moment right now where those who are afraid will give away their power, but those that are terrified will give away their soul. The battle for the dominion of your brain is for you to self-sabotage yourself. And I want you to really breathe that in. It, it, it's a moment where you're where you're literally sabotaging yourself. And, you know, I want to, again, thank you all for being here because, again, tonight is a very powerful moment. It is an extraordinarily profound alchemical transformational full moon. And I'm going to be culminating with the, with the messages from the masters that have been coming in. It is my 22nd wedding anniversary to my beloved angel ascended master wisdom teacher, Sri Ram Ka, who I miss so much. I really can't talk that much about, but I will. And <laughs> I mean, in addition to all of that, right? So we have, it's the full moon. It's our wedding anniversary. It's also one week since Sri ascended. And it's 8.33 PM right now, which is why I'm stopping because it was 8.33 PM last, last week when I was asked to go to the morgue. And so I, would, I want to take a moment of silence right now. Can we do that? Let's do that. Thank you. My husband was an extraordinary man. And one of the things that I'm, I'm very, very, very um, grateful for is that we have created a shrine here at the, uh, turned out my husband was building his own memorial, right? Just like the ancient Egyptians, he built his pyramids so that we could entomb him in it. And we actually have. And so thank you for that. Thank you for that moment to just sit and breathe and to be, and to know that, um, it's really a beautiful moment to be together. I, I want to backtrack for a second. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have Sue um, offering me. She's right hiding in my other room over there. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to invite your questions and I want to answer them all. But before I do, I want you to re really feel this. Just because a civilization may be more technologically advanced than what we would consider to be the, techno the technological advancements that we have on this planetary experience here does not mean they're operating from a higher consciousness. Now, I want you to really breathe that in. All right, I know I'm, I'm getting a little out there for you. And like I said, I'm gonna post some video tomorrow on what happened in the sky, which is just amazing in the three ships that were here. When we accept and remember ourselves as the divine masters that we are when there is that absolute unshakable knowing, right? That knowing that no matter what I am, divine mastery presence, informed awareness. When we own that, when we hold that, when we live it, when we bring it in, we can survive even having half of your soul leave the planet without any advance notice. And we can dive into the divine dance of that pain, knowing it's part of why we came, even while we're feeling it. And, and at my husband, it was literally a, a week ago right now. And it's our anniversary. And we're together. And it's a full moon. I mean, what more could anyone ask for? To not be afraid of who you truly are. To say yes to you. To know that you're safe to be you. That's what Sri and I, you know, years ago, George Norrie's famous quote about Sri and I was that we were the two greatest examples of open-mindedness. And I pray we're now not the only open, I hope we're not the greatest. I hope there's a lot more. <laughs> I hope that we're standing in a world of, of people that are open-minded because open-mindedness transcends the absolute self-sabotage and the loop that seeks to hold your consciousness at a lateral spin that is built upon competition, greed, and jealousy. 
Imagine a world free of competition, greed, and jealousy. Imagine a world where you're honestly celebrating each other. Really take that in right now. Breathe that in. You know, Shri and I, always, we loved Reverend Ike, right? And Rev Ike would always be, hey, your friend has more money than you. Your friend has more cars than you. Your friend has whatever you want. You just say, yeah, that's for me, right? And so I was married to an ascended master. That's for me. And he knew. He trusted you. He trusted all of you enough that together we are better, that we're going to do this. That our children's 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 children, where my Native American comes in, guys, deserves it. That we must be looking broad. That we we have an obligation to ourselves. You're a divine master. Where did you ever doubt that? Because anytime you've doubted that, as I have on my journey as well, I am here. Call in your heart. Stay in your heart. Stand in your conscious awareness. And when everyone around you thinks you're crazy, and when everyone around you wants to say you need medication or whatever, look them right in the eye, but you got to mean it, bringing your hands to your heart and just gaze right into their eyes and say, thank you. Thank you for loving me enough. Thank you for loving me enough to share that. I am so grateful. And may you know that I love myself enough to pay attention. It's a beautiful beautiful, beautiful gift to not be afraid to accept your alchemical transformation. The entire experience of this potentiality is alchemically shifting. When I gaze at the potentialities and those of you that are part of our Monday mastery journey and this year, oh my God, it's 24, please come. I mean, if you get to shrinkcare.com and forgive me, it's not being updated because my husband did all of that. <laughs> and all of you that are on the app, I promise you within a week, we'll figure it out. And I'm praying our knights in shining armor and queens in shining armor are showing up. Um, but when you go to shrinkcare.com right now, get involved. Help help Shri's transition be what he sacrificed his life to be. And I don't want to use that word sacrifice what he consciously chose to do. And out of the kindness of his heart, he never let me know. And, and nor do I have anything other than respect for such an extraordinary being to have been on our planet in my life for 22 years. And so I'm going to take a moment and listen to you. And Sue is right here. So Sue, you want to read me a question? Sure. All right. Hey, okay. guys, Sue's reading me questions. You can hear her over there. So the, this one is from Omishar. Hey, Omishar. Hi, honey. And he says, my question is, regarding our birth country, should we be living there now? Or is that just our entry point? Fabulous question, Omishar. So should we be living there now? Or is that our entry point? Let me let me go back. So when it comes to the sacred sequence of incarnation, and those of you that have ever had uh, a master soul code experience with me, or if I've ever done your ascended numerology or, or done all that, you're, that's what we do. The way that it sequences is that your first delineation into this potentiality is the time sequencing. And then within that time sequencing, how many available in this world we use planetary, planetary experiences are available to accomplish that which the seed of light in this energy of love is coming forward to experience through conscious awareness. But then right under that is the birth country. I know right under it, right next one. So the birth country is extremely important because the birth country, number one, and it needs to be how it was on your birth certificate. And if you don't have a birth certificate, then however you were, you were shared with it, it was, right? Because what it does is, based on how you were born, for example, there's the United Kingdom, but there's Great Britain. There's England, just to use one example. So, so where are you? Countries that others were born in are now under different names. So it's not just the land mass. It's the identification through that stream of sequencing that identifies you into this specific experience of form, right? Now, what's next then, of course, is the birth name. And, and this often becomes very interesting because a lot of people who have been adopted or gone through birth name changes. My husband was born without a name on his birth certificate. They filled it in three days later. 
So, so how does that play in? Well, remember, that's your first communication with your parents. Your birth name as the third number in the sequencing that then determines the fourth number. Remember, 13, perfect balance, the four. So, so when that third number comes forward with the birth name, you have made sure through how this union with the parents or the, those that are birthing you, that the, the womb that you're coming through, there is an agreement through that, that when that name comes forward, it will sequence so that your master soul code, which is eternal, it doesn't change, it crosses all boundaries, it goes everywhere, that it will always come into that number. And so that's a really powerful moment. Because in this moment right now, and the reason, Omashar, I'm giving you such a deep answer, and I pray I'm not doing too much, but I pray that, that it's enough, is that right now, it's not about the choice of where you're living from a, from a density perspective. Right now, it's about where's your heart calling you? Where are you being pulled? I, I want to give you guys an example of this, because we are at Humanity's 12 o'clock hour, and I, and I do have a significant message to share with you all as well. And I will do that. But in this moment, I can share with you that I remember when Shri and I were living in Guatemala and the book we had on the same day. And some of you on the chat probably remember this, right? So you had, we had a volcano erupting, huge sinkhole, earthquake. And then in our beautiful little village of San Antonio Palopo on the shores of Lake Atitlan, in what felt like 30 seconds, we lost 22 people we knew, a landslide came down, a school was destroyed. All of that happened. And Shri and I were there because we had trusted our hearts, not because we had said it was the right place to live or the greatest place to be or whatever. It was just our heart brought us there. And because we were there during that disaster, our boat became a lifeboat for that entire village. Shri built the water systems and prevented a cholera outbreak. We were bringing in colloidal silver. We were bringing in food and blankets and bought looms for all the people that had lost their livelihood. So they could, you know, brought them their initial thread so they could start, you know, spinning again and doing their things again. That's living from the, the, the true passionate action of a divine master. It says sincerity, love, and presence will in all ways equal miracles. So I just want you to breathe that in. Sincerity, love, and presence come when ulterior motive no longer exists. It's when we are outside of competition, <laughs> greed, and jealousy. So in this moment right now, where is your heart calling you, but your brain might be stopping you? Because that's part of that battle that's going on right now. All right, Sue, do we have another question? We have a question from Pauline. And she says, if we sign up for the Monday Mastery Series of 24 weeks um, and miss the first two, can we catch up? Yes. And thank you for asking. And oh, my God, get in there. What, what's happening those of you that are currently in Monday Mastery, those of you that are currently in Divine Mastery Presence, if you're in the chat, I don't I don't look at chat while it's on. That's why Sue's reading them to me. But if you're in chat, please talk about it. Because who would have thought, you know, January was all about these, uh, in, the, alchemy, the alchemical transformation and the, these energetic trip switches and how to navigate them and how to find them. And the universe has asked me to be creating this visionary art that that is really taking a very deep, deep and and over the over, by the time it's over we're going to have these 24 panels that are supposed to all come together but who would have imagined that between journey 1 and journey 2 shri would have said i am going to ascend now so that we can do this he did it for me and he did it for you he's holding my hand on the other side and we're holding you as you're holding us that's what divine mastery presence is as well. So yes, if you are not part of Mondays, get in there. It's such a minimum donation. And, and Global Minga, let's not let it go with Sri, right? Every dollar you send, we donate. Please don't ever forget that Sri and I are, are really licensed, studied ministers, not internet. You know, I'm not taking away from that. I'm just saying that in our case, we dedicated our lives to God when we came together. And that is why no matter 
how I feel inside in my human aspects that try to take me away from my mastery. At the end of the day, I honor my beloved husband for keeping his word, for knowing that here we are at humanity's 12 o'clock hour. And for all of you, and I just want to take a moment, all of you that have recently lost someone or have ever lost someone, and especially those of you that have lost a spouse, because until this moment, I could have never understood your pain. Just know that I am grateful to understand your pain. I'm grateful to stand here beside your I really am. We are in a beautiful moment where together we are better. And that's what divine mastery presence is. We take each other's hands and we don't let go. And that's what's coming up starting in February. And I really pray you'll take that journey with Sri and I. With Sri and I. I'm Here he is. He's right here. I, 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 this thing doesn't mirror. It's making me hard. There it is. This is Sri's wedding band again. I'll show you. All right. So there's Sri and there's Kira. <laughs> and the 2024 journey we had already seen and it was shown to us is extraordinary. And I really want you to treat, please try to find that. Um, everything I'm talking about, go to sriandkira.com. You do need to register. Um, so go go check out Mastery Monday, the, what's happening this year. Check out Divine Mastery Presence. Join us. We're almost at capacity for that. And I do also want to bow before those of you that I have had the honor of personally mentoring uh, during this past year. And I'm very, very grateful that I'm able to receive people for private mentoring again. Watching your lives take off, watching the magic, the miracles. I don't know if any of you that I private mentor want to even reveal who you are or be in the chat and share with others, but that is something that I'm really looking forward to more of in 2024 is that one-on-one -on -one opportunity to really, really call it out, to really live it to be able to transcend anything and be right back out there saying, I love you on the one week anniversary of the ascension of your beloved husband, a man who is extraordinarily brilliant. Sue, thank you. I'm, I'm getting just mushy and I apologize. Who else do we have, honey? Well, I'd like to share this comment. Please. We are one. We are one. I love that. Upon awakening this morning in Okinawa, mm. I noticed the clock adding up to the number four over the last few hours. And then I happened upon your video, beloved one. Mm, I love you. And and this is see, this is this is what's happening is that we have been, I have been with all of you, our beloved family. Monday we were together, Tuesday uh last night, uh or yeah. No, Wednesday we did the, uh, anyway, you guys have been with me. Forgive me for getting confused. It's a little challenging right now. But I thank you for finding us in whatever way you find us, because for me, it will always be us. All I know is that my beautiful, beloved Sri Ramka has come right in so that the MLKR may be here a hundred. I have, my life is only for you, period. However long or short it may be, I am here to serve outside of jealousy, greed, and competition. And I know that I can no longer interact in any of those arenas. I know I can only be with those who understand the unified field of the yoga of self-ascension. And I know that I am so honored through Sri and I to have such a beautiful worldwide community because that was our dream. That was our vision, that we are one. So thank you for that. I'm so honored. Who else do we have, my love? There are so many messages of love pouring through for you. Thank and, you. And experiences. And so thank I just you. Want you to know that thank you, Sue. A lot coming through. You should see Sue's face. She's adorable. She's right over there saying, I don't want them to see me. <laughs> but, she, <laughs> but she's adorable. <laughs> she's right there. Like she's adorable. Stop. I know it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> all right. Well, well, what I will share with all of you, and, and if any of you would have another question, please call it in. And then I'm going to, in, in about five minutes, we'll we'll just kind of center in and I'm going to ask you to just kind of stop chatting and, and really receive what needs to be received. But as we're preparing for that, I really want to remind you that, and, and, and this is not a plug, it's just a truth. If you do not yet have the 2024 Ascension Guide, the Yoga of Self-Ascension Guide for this year, please with all my heart, get it. It's 58 pages of which only about six are calendars. There is 
and, and let me describe it this way. And I and forgive me using these battle metaphors, right? There has been this battle for the dominion of your brain for quite a while, ever since the fourth dimension collapsed. And here at YouTube, just go in, Shri and I, you can't fake it for 22 years. We are the real thing. And that's why we scared people. And that's why a lot of people were afraid because they weren't ready to just go outside the box of, of no, it's got to be this way. It's always been this way. and It's got to be this. No, what it is, is as unique for you as it is for the next person. When you are gifted with the truth, with authenticity, if you have not read our first book still out there, Sacred Union, The Journey Home, probably more poignant now than ever. And then I would wrap it with the Ascension Renaissance. And then my commitment, and I have the help coming in March to help me, is to finish Sri and I's powerful book that we have been working on for a while that has all of his levels of consciousness and his explorations of David Hawkins' work. And it's extraordinary. When we give ourselves the gift of authenticity, I will share with you that sometimes it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Over the past few days, it, I, I've, I've seen that. Because when you, when you give yourself the gift, as Shri and I always have, and as he's so brilliantly modeled, but when you interact with people, knowing your word is your bond, knowing that you trust first because you are trustworthy, which is what we do, not everybody, let's just say there's many that speak with forked tongues. And because of the, I like to call it the naivety or the innocence of truth, sometimes you're going to get burned. Here's why that moment matters. It will be the moment where you will have to make the choice. And if you never read our book, 2012, you have a choice, you should. <laughs> but it'll be the moment where you have to make the choice. Am I, what am I going to, you know, how am I going to move through this right now? How am I going to move through this? Because it's always yours to choose. It is always yours to choose. And as we are in this moment right now, 2024 is a choice year. Your battle, the battle that we're all in right now, is the battle that wants you to self-sabotage. Because in this experience of potentiality, it's quite frankly easy to help people self-sabotage. How many people do you know? How many times have you yourself, I'm the first one to raise my hand, self-sabotage? Well, how does self-sabotage happen? Fear, hesitancy, and doubt. It's a trifecta, right? There it is. Fear, hesitancy, and doubt, boom, self-sabotage, you're over. It's done. And what is the planetary thought body filled with right now, especially ever since that fourth dimension collapsed and all these videos are at YouTube, just type in collapse of the fourth dimension and you'll see the metamorphosis of Sri and I, you'll see the alchemical transformations we've been going through. But when that fourth dimension collapsed, everything in density became more fear-based. And then there was the rise of the seven polarities. And I had put out, the Ascended Realms asked me to put out that chart for everything that would track between that seven-year escalator of 2015 through 2021, when in 2022, we all just jumped off and went top floor. Oh my God, now what? Right now is now what? I'm not going to catch you up on two years worth of material, but I will share with you, please get the 2024 Self-Ascension Guide. Give yourself that gift and just Sit with it, read it, digest it, be with it. So let's take in a breath. Hey, Angel, anything else? All kinds of beautiful comments. All right. Well, thank you, Sue. I'm really glad to hear that. Well, all right, my angels. So what we're going to do is I'm going to invite you right now because years and years ago, I learned that the mind would only absorb what the butt would endure. <laughs> so I'm not going to make you sit here too much longer. But I do want you to settle in. Have a tea, sink into your chair, open your heart and breathe. Just breathe in any way you want. If you know the Ave saw breath, we simply breathe in deeply in the nose and the Ave and out on the saw. Ave saw. And bringing your hands to your heart. 
really invite, I'm going to say the mantra of self-ascension slowly. And rather, you, you can repeat it if you like, each, each line. However, what I'm inviting you to do is to feel that line deeper. Feel the potency of it through the power of it. Notice, notice what it brings up in you. You ready? Okay. Hands to heart if you feel comfortable doing. Closing your eyes, it feels safe. I am here. I am ready. I am open. Guide me. Hidden within the mantra of self ascension, I am here for very, I am ready. I am open. Guide me is the surrender. It is that yoga of self-ascension unified moment. And, and it brings me to the messages that, that the Ascended Realms have been, and I'm just gonna step a little straighter. I've been sitting with this, really wondering how I was gonna share this. And so I'm just gonna share it. And the truth and the authenticity of all that I am as you are. They're telling me to put my coat back on. So I'm going to put my coat back on. Where is it? I'm sitting on it. And as I'm putting my coat back on, make sure that you're settled in. Remember that the gift of having been with Sri for 22 years is that I do understand and, and I'm able to call forward his presence so that the ensoulments are not only happening in a richer, dip, not, not a richer, but, but in a more... Um, in a way that's that's lovely and different. And the MLKR presence has been more and more anchored outside of that which carries the physical form. And as you are together with us now, let's just bring our hands. I want you to bring your hands up. See how my hands are like this? Bring them up like this, all right? And so the way that we do I am here is I am here. And we grab, see how we're grabbing like that? So release your hands. We're going to do that again. And when I do that, I'm going to invite you to start really feeling that sea of neutrality. Letting go of what the mind wants you to think that means. Let go of the mind because in those five medicines, right? The five medicines that are spinning right now, the mind is the key to self-sabotage. So breathing in. I am here. I am ready. I am open. Guide me. Relaxing your arms, feeling the guidance, feeling the energy floating around you right now. I come to you now as a unified field. And inside of the unified field is all that has been and all that has ever and will be. You are here now as much as you are in many other dimensional spaces. The truth of which is causing many in this world of form to begin to lose that which they consider to be their grasp on sanity. Shortly before us all, as we have illuminated and stepped into a 12 o'clock hour, which is all about the physical, let us remember that within that moment of the physicality of this 12 o'clock hour rests the totality of your consciousness. The totality of your consciousness. That in this moment right now, as you would begin to witness things that many may say, where is the humanity? Where is the heart? Oh, what is happening? Things that are specifically going to trigger fear, doubt, and hesitancy. Those seeds of self-sabotage are vast, and if they take hold, then consciousness will no longer be in its balanced form, and it will once again collapse 
into the three and the nine position, which is where it's just the emotional playing with the spiritual. I want to feel better. I have better languaging. This is a great way to talk about this, but have I grown? No. I just have this beautiful opposite medicines playing with each other. Similarly, we are in humanity's 12 o'clock moment, which means our physical and our mental are, are trying to jockey for position. In this moment right now, you are the hope for humanity. It is your ability to hold steadfast commitment, focused awareness, and complete trust in the next 60 days. The next 60 days. The next 60 days. It is a critical moment on humanity's journey of conscious awareness. And the gift is that we have already gone further than we have ever gone before as far as consciousness is concerned. Whether or not you're believing it, aware of it, it doesn't matter. We have achieved that. And that in and of itself is worth the party that I know we're all going to have as soon as we leave this one illusion. The Ascended Masters have, and all of the Ascended Realms, these unified fields, they want you to hear this as well. The yoga of self-ascension is as unique as you are, and it is the unification. Unification is not about looking outside. It's not about pretending. It's not about those that are looking to usurp from another or those that are trying to take from others. It is about standing inside of your own soul in the unified divine mastery presence, fully consciously awake, commanding this body of form so that you may be here now through the sacred sequence of incarnation to affect the stream of conscious awareness to envelop this potentiality so that we may sustain. Take in a breath, because I'm feeling a lot of third chakra. And as you take in a breath, remember this, that that message, and it's urgent, and it's these next 60 days, We it's about getting to the equinox. We have been out of balance, and I apologize. I had lots and lots of screenshot or you know things for you, but we have been out of balance, and and that fifty thousand year cycle with the green comet. This is a herald, and they they keep talking about the herald, and 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 that that was the like the the warrior on high. They keep calling it the warrior on high that came in to say, hey, out of time. And so now that you're here and now that you know this and now that you took the time, and yes, I saved it to the end. Aren't you glad you took the journey tonight with me? I know I'm glad you took it with me. This is that moment where your authenticity and your light and your illumination are the gift. That all the things that are conspiring to frighten you, all the things that are conspiring to stop you. My God, I was on the front lines and they shot my king. He's gone, but I picked up his standard and I might be bloody and I might have a lot of bullets in me, but you know what? I'm still walking and I will keep walking because I know the power of the law of instantaneous manifestation. And that's what this message is designed to offer you. The resonant knowing to not be afraid. Fear Doubt and hesitancy are how we all got here. But together, we are better if we hold on and we don't let go. Because you're going to have your moments. That's why divine mastery presence matters. You're going to have those moments. And when you have those moments, when those moments happen to you, that's what DMP is for. That's what I Am Mastery Monday is for. It's about saying enough. Enough. I have, and I, I just want to share with you because they want me to add this. I have spent the past two years, as has my husband, talking to many, many people that a lot of you know, and many that you may not know, but you have, you've definitely heard of. Every one of them had terror in their eyes because they realized that they couldn't, that we were real. Most of them are still very much in this 
spiritual, emotional, spiritual, emotional, right? I'm going to keep you hooked on me because of your emotional body, but I'm going to salt and pepper it with some nice spiritual language. And then you have that physical opposite the mental. The cog, the wheel is consciousness. And consciousness itself invites you to go beyond the need to rationalize. It invites you to go beyond the fear and it invites you to remember your limitless nature. And what I know is that my beloved ascended master, wisdom teacher, Sri Ram Ka, and I do have altar cards being made because he, th th you're going to want them. But my beloved ascended master, Sri Ram Ka, could have easily, months ago, we, we could have done things differently. But what he knew in his heart was that I had to have that open portal at a time when if I didn't have that direct connection to hold that open portal, the density that's spinning around right now, the spirals, and again, I had all these great graphics, get the, cal get the 2024 planner. But remember, we're in the great spiral and in the upward spiral and the downward spiral are going in opposite directions. And they're both tornadoes. So stay out of the tornado by knowing who you are. And then you're in that beautiful, bliss-filled center pillar of light, the center of the storm. Only in 2024, we've got two of them. And what's happened is this open eye that is looking at you and saying, over the next 60 days, the alchemical transformation of humanity in a year of choice will come to the cycle that 50,000 year cycle is just re-upping again. Remember, we're, we're, we've been in year one. We've been in a year of things. Everything has been a first. This has been the year where, you know, Shri's transition is, is an, a whole other uh, field of our work is opening. It's not ending. It's just beginning again. How fun is that? All right, I think our fourth life in these bodies. So that's the moment at hand for you. Can you put aside your ego? Can you finally just look at it and go, you know what? I, I, it's not about me. It's about us. It's about us. It's about our beautiful Garden of Eden planet where you incarnated during the seeding of this planet, where your sacred scrolls were given to those that had the honor of shepherding you, where your mastery was assured just like it is right now. Only now we're doing it together because in order for it to be assured, we each have to do a little work to get there. But at the end of the day, and wrapping up my very long two-year journey about where Shri and I have been. What I know is true is that the unification that I was trying to do with all these other people and got burned many, many times, had five attacks on my life, you know, the fact that I'm still alive is the miracle and, and that Shri ascended is the blessing, right? Unification will happen when the yoga of self-ascension is yours to claim. We cannot look at each other and say, I will be your brother and sister so casually. I don't use those words casually. I really don't because you're all my family. You're all my family. And so beyond the potentiality of the limitation of brother and sister or father and mother, why not just step into the acceptance of the soul's journey, the eternal nature of that which you are as I am. And come join me at this round table because I've just come in from a battle that we lost and they took my king. But I know that the rest of us are sitting at this table and I am honored to be sitting here with you. And I want you to know I would walk through a field of bullets to keep this planet going and this potentiality. And Sri gave his physical body to make sure that I would do that. And so I love you. And I want you to leave this experience, carry this experience with you right now. That these next 60 days for all of humanity are the most critical we have ever been in. And this is, this is not to cause you anything other than the enthusiasm of let's do this. Let's do this. And I will share with all of you, I need your help. I just need your help. I really do. 
This is a big one, guys. And I've got this beautiful round table and I'm sitting here with my sword and my standard. And I see a lot of you too. It is time for each of us to come together outside of competition, greed, and jealousy, and to remember the eternal nature of the abundant flow. Because as my beautiful Reb Ike would say, that's for me. And I love you. I bow before you. I'm going to be putting out a video in the next day or so about what's been happening here with all of the incredible cosmic activity. And I pray that you come visit me here at Tosa Blue Mountain because that's the other thing I'm clear on is that I need to stay on this mountain. It's time for me to retreat into the mountain. I love you with all my heart and I am so excited. I will be with those of you at Monday Mastery, be with you in Divine Mastery Presence. Please take a year and, and give yourself that up level. And of course, the full predictions for February, I will be right here offering to all of you. Between now and then, if you have any questions, please write us at support at selfascension.com. Go check it out and know you are the gift. You are ready. And I love you with all my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. I, I don't even want to say goodbye to you because I just miss you already. So I look forward to being with you again really soon. And I just want to thank you all for being with me on my anniversary. And the uh, one week anniversary of Shri. I will say it's surreal. But I know he did it for all of us. I get it. I know it. And I just want you to know that no matter how many times this starts happening to me, and I don't, I can't promise you I'll ever stop. My mastery presence rises with every tear. And so may your mastery presence rise with every tear that may come into your life. And may you know that there is not anything you have been through that I could not hold you through. And I look forward to working with some of you privately over the next year. I look forward to working with you in divine mastery presence. I look forward to really doing this together. Can we just prove that we can do it because it's the right thing to do? Can we hold that, guys? Can we do that? We, we don't need to let hate win. And, and, and you are the blessing. So I'm going to go. I feel like I'm hanging up on someone. You hang up. No, you hang up. Because I just like being with you. I love you so, so much. You're extraordinary. And uh, think about coming to visit me. I'd love to meet you in person. And for all of you that are coming in March, I can hardly wait because these 60 days matter. Together we are better. I'm holding on and I'm not letting go. And I will share with you that 48 hours, the 48 hours after Sri left, I strongly considered letting go. And so I'm so grateful to be here. I love you. I'm going to figure this YouTube thing out. And hopefully someone with some computer skills will come our way and help us. And May you know that I hold you in my heart every day and that if you need somebody to hold you in your heart, remember our 24-hour prayer service, The Healing Light at selfascension.com. Whatever you need, confidential, yours, and always miracle-filled. I love you, angels. And I know Shri is already speaking and appearing to so many of you. Thank you for receiving him. I love you forever. Many blessings. I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.